time to get the Marmite out. This week's review is a real change to the norm. The T4E TP50 Compact. and welcome to AAR On Air. This week is the turn of the somewhat radical looking TP50. And bizarrely enough, the box has been toned down and simply mentions training for engagement and tactical pistol. Hence the T4E and TP parts. And no sign of the other more upsetting words to some anyway. Anyway, enough of the box and angry of Mayfair's rants. What about this futuristic compact pistol? Let's take a closer look, shall we? It is around 180 millimeters or about seven inches long, tips the scales at 585 grams or one pound four and a half ounces in its all black finish. It is a 50 cal and probably the best word to describe it is quirky. It has a futuristic look to it and feels as though it should be straight from some sci-fi film or Xbox game. It is made from high quality polymer and feels like it would take some serious knocks. The top sights feel as though they have come straight off a single action army colt with that elongated groove which doubles up as a dovetail rail to add a red dot or the like. I can then hear the undercurrent of love coming back claiming what's the point of it being classed as a compact then? But if we're going futuristic then let's go the whole hog. The barrel is big enough to keep your ferrets in at 50 calibers and it's smooth ball because this is aimed at the paintball marker ammo rather than serious target work, just like the HDRs, HDX, HDS and HDP siblings. This has the fast gas up system with a single strike to the bottom, which will instantly pierce the CO2 on board, popping up the red indicator to let you know you're ready to fire. At this point, it's worth mentioning I didn't say 12 gram CO2 because there is another quirky point about this little pistol. It actually takes 8 gram CO2s, which are naturally more compact to help with this compact design, but will hold less gas, meaning fewer shots, and are somewhat more difficult to get hold of, and believe it or not, a little more expensive than the 12 gram versions. Hmm. Oh, and don't be tempted to use the nitrous oxide versions. There are likely to be side effects and it's difficult to hit your target when you're laughing your head off. By the way, that's called humour. The trigger is very much a la Glock style and is also nice and broad. So what about loading the ammo? Well, this is another quirky point. The trigger guard pulls down to reveal the onboard magazine. Push the spring forward and lock into place, then feed in your four rounds of 50 cal. Once loaded, simply release the spring to hold them in place. Now that can be four rounds of 50 cal in either rubber balls, paint balls, chalk balls, or whatever takes your fancy. And yes, it takes four rounds. We did say it was compact. Next thing to do is unscrew the bottom plunger located at the base of the grip. Drop in your eight gram CO2 bottom first, then screw it back in there we go, then you're ready for the strike to use part of this. Time to get this over the chronograph and see what the power output from this compact unit really is. 
and using 50 cal rubber balls that tipped the scales at 17.69 grains, it saw 332 feet per second, which is 4.33 foot pounds of 5.67 joules. There are more powerful versions of this, but there is still the question around frangible ammo and whether or not it's within the UK limit. So I would prefer to stick to the sub 7.5 joules version and avoid any potential arguments with our understanding constabulary in Blighty. Time to get this out on the range to see if it is accurate. Now I know it's not gonna be a match winning accuracy tool, but can it show some sort of grouping and consistency? Outside at 10 meters. Red dot fitted. Here goes. The Umarex TP50 Compact. What a bizarre design. It's exactly the same style as far as the, the hit, so strike mechanism. Pop out the red at the back, you know that you're live, so you can always be sure that you've got gas. Nice idea. It's got this strange way of loading at the front. You pull uh, the front of the trigger guard down, reveal four shots, there's only four, and it does take a rather odd eight gram CO2. It's really nice and compact. It's probably a little short in the grip. And I've put the red dot on the top just to give us a go. Although these are not about target work. They're just about, well, a bit of fun, I suppose. Paintball marker. This one is fairly powerful. I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of it. It's part of the training for engagement series. So we've got some targets down range, about 10 meters. Shall we see what we can do with it? Here goes. We'll have the red dot on. I don't want to get too close because it's, you will get some ricochet coming back off that. Absolutely, but that is making a real dent in that stainless steel plate. That is somewhat scary. Let's just try it at the board. <laughs> I wouldn't swear to it, but I think it's dented that ply. Gee whiz. I don't know whether having four shots is a good thing or a bad thing. It's probably a good thing, because otherwise you're going to get these things doing some serious damage. Wow! That really does put some dents in it. It's a bit dirty, so you can't really see it that well. But that has put some serious dents in that. And it's put dents in that ply board as well. And they were just firing back off like crazy. Much better off putting paintballs in this. At least they splat and they stay there. But if you want to do some hard hitting stuff, put some hard rubber balls in. That, uh, that four and a half foot pound or whatever it is may not seem a lot. I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of it. That is one serious piece of kit, dead easy to actually load, putting the balls in there, and you're away. That sight makes it um, pretty useful as well. Absolutely. Nice piece of kit, <laughs> good piece of fun. Be careful. Yeah, back to the studio. The main thing with any of these in the T4E range is fun, and to be used as practice weapons as the name implies. I love the HDRs and indeed all the range, including the amazing Glock 17.43 cal and especially the HDX68. This is equally as much fun but would benefit from a higher capacity magazine, but doing so would change the design and layout of the compact pistol, which is what this is intended to be. This is also the reason for the slightly odd 8 gram CO2s. The price, 
Well, it is currently about £170. And the red dot that I use is the Victoptics Z1, which is less than £30. As always, to me, these are about fun and owning something quirky and well-made that will, with the right ammo, give hours of entertainment. They can be sat with a CO2 on board without fear of it slowly leaking air and be instantly ready when you need it with a simple strike to the bottom of the grip. At the time of going to press, as it were, I wasn't aware of any holster for this, which would add a nice touch. Hopefully you found this interesting. If so, please give us the old thumbs up, subscribe, share, click the alarm notification bell, check out the other platforms and chats, including, of course, Airgun Factory Facebook. There is the AAR website. A big thank you to the guys and girls at Vector Air for getting hold of this radical pistol for me to share with you guys. Most of all, my biggest thanks go out to you for watching and supporting what we're trying to do here with all these things that we shoot. Please stay safe and shoot safe and hopefully I'll see you next week. Bye for now.